The dictator wants to regulate what you do. The totalitarian government wants to regulate what you think, what you believe, and what you say. And that's the ultimate pinnacle of tyranny, uh, is a totalitarian regime. And we see that, uh, and I would say that we're in a, um, uh, uh, the early shadows of a totalitarianism are descending on our country. Welcome to the Dr. Jeff Show podcast. This is the show where I interview major thought leaders from many fields of influence, showing how our worldview changes everything. You can find the show everywhere podcasts are found, including Liftable, Edify, Apple, Spotify, you name it. On today's episode, I'm sharing a conversation I had with Mike Ferris at a national gathering of religious leaders earlier this spring. Mike is one of the most amazing advocates for religious freedom, and we get to go deep into why that's so important and what we as Americans should be doing. Mike's the former president and CEO of the Alliance Defending Freedom and is an advocate and champion for free speech, really. He's written over 15 books. He's testified before the House and Senate. He started a college, Patrick Henry College in Virginia. He's eminently qualified to speak on this issue, and I had lots of questions for him. Let's listen in. My first welcome to the Dr. Jeff Show podcast. Jeff, it's always a terrific pleasure to be around you and listen to you and talk with you and just be your friend. Well, I'm, I'm so glad for our friendship. We first met, you had founded an organization called the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, which fought for and secured the right to homeschool all across the United States of America, and now the fastest growing educational movement in the United States. And uh, I just always saw you as a guy who was you're, you're thinking out decades ahead what needs to happen for our nation to stay free. Well, homeschooling has been such a blessing to the millions of families that have done it. And I, it really uh, performed a really good service for the whole country during COVID because people all of a sudden, whether they were technically homeschoolers or not, felt like they were homeschooling. And if it wasn't for the general knowledge that homeschooling works pretty well, I think people would have been even more freaked out than they were. It gave a bit of educational calm to our country. And of course, uh, the homeschooling movement essentially doubled during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I think that about 80% of that doubling is going to be retained. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's a huge growth. Uh, it's about 9% of the current population, uh, are homeschooling their kids. It's just terrific. Yeah. Well, I was the weekend, the lockdowns began, I was speaking at a homeschooling conference. And they came in and said, you got to shut it down. And so the last thing I said to the audience was, I just want you to know you're part of a rapidly growing movement from 1.5 million children to 50 million children in one day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly right. But, but it, yeah. wa- but it was right. all of a sudden possible for people to think, well, maybe we can make this work. We, maybe we can actually take responsibility for the education of our children. But you've always seen that as part of a larger focus on freedom, including the work that you've done with Alliance Defending Freedom, defending organizations like ours when we get in trouble and the legal defense for ourselves would not be possible. Um, I would love to just hear a little of your story of how how you got to the place where you just thought, I'm going to invest my life fighting for freedom. Well, uh, my... uh Dad encouraged me to become a lawyer. I mean, the background is I started reading the newspaper every day when I was six years old. And uh, my dad was a public school elementary principal, and he'd take me to school board meetings, and he didn't like the uh, influence that the ACLU and others were having on schools. And so he wanted me to become a lawyer uh, for school districts to fight against the ACLU. So that was kind of the early entry into thinking about this. And so... But as I um, got to law school and uh, even in undergraduate school, I pretty well had figured out that the schools on the whole had flipped sides and they were on the same side as the ACLU. And so um, I just had a general idea that I wanted to fight for uh, Christians and freedom related to that. I didn't know exactly how that was was going to come out, but uh, education ended up being a huge part of that uh, in the homeschooling world. I, I led Homeschool Legal Defense Association as the lead litigator for um, about 30 years. Um, I've been the chairman of the board uh, for all 40 years of its existence and still am, But and so I'm still involved in, in, in a degree, but I, I stopped litigating about 10 years ago. The, then uh, f- from from that work, you, you formed, and with a team of other people, obviously, Patrick Henry College. Right. Uh, so... 
so it, was that a, a, a move to say, okay, we're going to use this college as a place to train leaders out of, out of the homeschool movement, or was it? Uh, well, in part, but the, uh, the things that I've founded over my life, and I've founded a few things, uh, have usually come out of an express need that I understand and hear about. And uh, with uh, um, the origins of Patrick Henry College, there were two, two threads that I kept hearing. One was uh, from members of Congress. They kept saying, Mike, I'd like a sharp homeschool kid to join my staff. Mm. And I knew they didn't want 14-year-olds. Right. And so, <laughs> uh, you know, that was one of the, uh, you know, uh, to train congressional staff, people get involved in, in politics, probably law school down the road. Uh, and part of the impetus of that is I saw people working for members of Congress, even coming from some, some Christian schools, not all of them, that betrayed the congressman behind their back because I would see them in the committee meetings when the, or the staff meetings where congressmen weren't around and they weren't as, as conservative or consistent mm. on their worldview as the people that they were working for. Um, and so I saw a real need for that. And the other uh, side of the, of the need analysis came from homeschooling families, mostly parents, some, some students, uh, who are saying, you know, where's a college that has this attribute? Their, their classical education is very popular in the homeschooling world. That was a request. Uh, they all wanted a solid Christian worldview. Um, and, and there are probably about two or three dozen Christian colleges that I think have a, you know, a good, solid Christian yes. worldview. There's a whole lot of them that in J. Vernon McGee's terminology said they're believers, they're non-believers, and they're make-believers. And <laughs> there's a lot of make-believer Christian colleges out there, but they're, they're, you know, there's, there's more than a handful, but mm -hmm. you know, probably two or three dozen of what I would call faithful Christian schools. But, um, and so I, I blended all those th two things, all those th various threads together, and came up with the idea of Patrick Henry College, and we opened in 2000, and it's, it's gone very, very well in most respects. And is a powerhouse in, uh, in various kinds of debate, including uh, 13 national championships in moot court out of uh, 23 years of participating. That's not a bad ratio. You know, that's not that's bad. A, yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember visiting the campus for the first time and uh, went to the gymnasium, and some students were having physical education class, but all of the national <laughs> championship banners yeah. hanging in the gym all said moot court, right. and I just thought, that's hysterical, because yeah. I was a debate kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, it's, it's, it's the only gym in the country like it, and there's one world championship hanging up there as well. <laughs> but. Well, that's obviously what we're focused on at Summit Ministries is preparing a rising generation of leaders. And I, I would love for you to kind of, as we're thinking about freedom this month and our podcasts, our, all of our content, our programs, all of those kinds of things, help us help those who are in the rising generation understand religious freedom. What is the, why should that be a freedom that, that we should be fighting for? I'm reading a book um, called The Psychology of Totalitarianism mm -hmm. uh, by Dismet, I guess. The, the, it's a professor at the University of Ghent in uh, yeah. Belgium. And um, he argues uh, very convincingly that there's a difference between totalitarianism and other forms of authoritarian government, including di regular old dictatorships. Mm -hmm. The dictator wants to regulate what you do. The totalitarian government wants to regulate what you think, what you believe, and what you say. And that's the ultimate pinnacle of tyranny, uh, is a totalitarian regime. And we see that, uh, and I would say that we're in a, um, uh, the early shadows of a totalitarianism are descending on our country, uh, particularly um, on the internet, and we saw this, you know, massively with the combination of both the internet and the government in the COVID situation, where you weren't allowed to say what you believed, you weren't allowed to uh, dissent from uh, what was being said. And, you know, it turns out that the dissenters were right far more often than the government was, and far more often than the censors were. And the freedom to think and believe and say is at the heart of free people. And, and if you believe in freedom at all, you have to believe in the, in, in, you know, and, and the Christian uh, presupposition that that comes from is that God, not government, has jurisdiction over the heart, soul, and mind of man. 
And, and so if government has jurisdiction over that, I mean, and that's the difference between toleration and liberty. Toleration, the, the Toleration Acts of William and Mary in the late eight, 1680s, uh, was you could differ from the Church of England, but not very much. Mm -hmm. You know, minor variations allowed only. That's toleration. But liberty is the government has to stay out of this sphere entirely. Yes. And so we're seeing what amount to heresy trials. Um, uh, I mean, there's a little, literal heresy trial going on in Finland right now where the Enlightenment is having its full range, the, the, uh, like the French Revolution, where the Enlightenment went mad. Um, and, and we see that in Finland today. But we see the, the you know, R-rated or PG-13 rated versions of the, of the same evil in the United States in operation where people are being fired from their jobs for not using pronouns they want them to use. Mm -hmm. uh, and so religious liberty is the liberty of the heart, liberty of the soul. Yeah. And, and in our country, we didn't just limit it on what you believe alone. It's the free exercise of religion, the, the ability to act upon it. Because, you know, the Bible says, um, you know, your belief is great, but if you don't obey what you believe, don't act upon what you believe, do you really have faith? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so the, uh, you know, the Christian presuppositions doesn't stop with faith alone. It, it, it goes on to the ability to, to implement your faith into everyday life. And for my family's case, it was illegal for us to homeschool our kids when we started. We did it anyway because we believed God re required that of, of us. And, and so that was my religious freedom, uh, my freedom as a parent as well, to be able to make that decision rather than the government making that decision for me. All freedom is, is really basically that. Who makes the decision? Do you make the decision? If so, mm -hmm. you're free. If right. the government makes the decision, you're not free. Mm -hmm. You know, the Declaration of Independence says that government exists uh, to secure the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These, the government doesn't give you your rights. At best, a good government can secure those rights. Where, where did we get so off track that people now believe that any rights we have come from the government? Well, I, you know, we've bought into uh, variations of Enlightenment philosophy along the way, and it's because school systems and especially universities uh, teach from the premise that there is no God, or if there is, he's irrelevant. And Roman Romans one says that if you didn't think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. God turns you over to a depraved mind to do that which ought not to be done. And then there's a laundry list of sins, and they're horrible sins. And they come from just, we're going to ignore God. Uh, that's the, the foundation of the Enlightenment. That's the foundation that, uh, you know, is, I would say is fairly, it's overwhelmingly dominant in the academic world. And, and there's consequences to that. Huh. And the consequences are an acceptance of totalitarianism eventually, because if man's reason is supreme, as they contend, then the people with power can say their reason is supreme, and, and, the, and, and they f uh, want to force everybody. I, I, I think a real simple um, indication of, of who's right and who's wrong in all this, ask yourself, how do you treat the people who disagree with you? Mm -hmm. You know, we believe because we're taught that by our Lord that we're to love people that are different than us, and not only those that are different than us, those that misuse us and persecute us, we're to love them too. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people on the other side want to silence us, they dox people, they, they want to kill us. I mean, in, in, I live in Loudoun County, Virginia, which has become infamous, and there's a, a Facebook group, of they call it Love Loudoun, and it's anything but love, and they're, they're calling for... Uh, forcing people to lose their jobs if they disagree with what's going on in the wow. schools. And there have actually been calls for violence and death for people who disagree, including my own church. I, I go to Cornerstone Chapel in Leesburg, a large, courageous church. And, um, and so they've called out our church specifically for this kind of harassment. That's how they treat their enemies. Mm -hmm. they, want to, they want to silence them. They want to kill them. We just want to debate them and win in debate. Mm -hmm. You know, right. that, that's a... That's a completely different approach. And I, I, I would, you know, anybody that's that's just kind of in the middle of these things and trying to figure it out, that's a really good indicator. Look and see how they treat their opponent. Mm. Yeah. A lot of our summit ministry students have, have gone to law school and been part of the Blackstone Fellowship, yeah, that's a great program. which is a wonderful program from Alliance Defending Freedom. 
And then several of them have risen up and become clerks at the Supreme Court and gone on to become partners in law firms and, and things like that. Uh, it, it seems to me like uh, what you're doing at Patrick Henry and what Blackstone is doing is preparing sort of a, a frontline guard mm -hmm. for some of these liberties. Uh, what, what are some of the big challenges that you're seeing right now that they're going to need to be addressing here? Well, um, in, indeed, uh, there's a lot of overload. A lot of Patrick Henry students go to Summit. Yes. And a lot of them end up in Blackstone as well. And so, you know. Well, let's make a little pipeline. That's <laughs> right. It, it, it's, it's a terrific uh, combination of things. You know, if people have all three badges, Summit, Patrick Henry, <laughs> and Blackstone, they're set. <laughs> um, but uh, the, um, we, we are indeed seeking um, leadership. But I, I think that... that Christian leaders of any stripe, including the ones in the legal uh, arena, need to be bold. Uh, if we start shrinking from wh who we are, we're going to be in trouble. And, and it doesn't mean be obnoxious, but it does mean bold. Yeah. And um, I um, was picking a jury in San Diego, California in 1984, and it was a case um, a criminal case, um, a mom had run and hid in Texas for 18 months with her son after a judge came, uh, changed custody and gave her son over to her ex-husband who was homosexual. So that was the, the factual background. I asked every juror, do you know a born-again Christian? Do you know a homosexual? Every juror in the entire juror pool knew a homosexual. Hmm. One no born again Christian. Wow. This was in 1984. Wow. And you know, there were probably 20% of the population in 1984 that were born mm -hmm. again Christians in San Diego. And so I just thought it through later and it, you know, it, it was obvious to me they knew born again Christians. Yeah. They just didn't know that they knew born again yeah. Christians. Yeah. Because homosexuals were more open about who they were or more obvious about who they were than the believers were. And and you see LGBT rights increasing because people personalize these things. They think, well, I have a cousin or a friend or a neighbor, or coworker, somebody. And, and, and by personalizing it, they soften on the issues. Whereas if they don't know anybody, at least they don't think they know anybody as a born again Christian, they don't personalize it. Mm. Our rights have been diminished and other rights have been increasing because of our own silence. Mm. And so uh, if we uh, stay silent about who we are, we try to fly under the radar, then we're contributing to the demise of our own rights and our own freedoms. And we will become rapidly second class and even more greatly persecuted believers than we have today. I, I, I've been in India a couple of times for ADF. We have a, a big ministry there. And the way they treat Christians there is the way our country's headed. It is wow. open persecution, uh, violent persecution uh, against believers there. Um, and, and so we're on the same track. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I don't remember which political scientist or historian said this, but rights are a funny thing. You can't give them away. You have the right to free speech. Okay. You can't say, I don't want that right anymore. That's in the constitution. You're an American, you have it. But at the same time, you always have to fight for it in order to maintain it. Yeah, people will try to take it from you, but I mean that—that that is the legal meaning of inalienable. You can't mortgage it, you can't sell it, you can't yeah. give it away. It's—it's, it's, uh, you cannot alienate it. Mean, make it a stranger to you. It oh. always rides with you, and and so, um, but tyrants come in and try to take them away. Yeah, and so our duty is to keep what God has given us. Well, thank you for everything that you've done, Mike, to prepare this rising generation, especially for these challenges and the boldness that you inspire. And my prayer will be for this generation that will we'll recognize what a holy boldness is, what it looks like, and how to live it out. We're really grateful. Thank you so much, Jeff, and thank you for what you do with Summit. It's just terrific ministry. Thank you to Mike Ferris for coming on the show today. In Deuteronomy 32.4, we read that all God's ways are just. God cares about justice. Let's imitate God in pursuing justice and righteousness. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.
Thank you for listening to today's episode. The Dr. Jeff Show podcast is a resource of Summit Ministries. Summit equips and supports the rising generation to embrace God's truth and champion a biblical worldview. If you want more resources that can help you live out a biblical worldview as a student or reach the next generation as an educator, church leader, or parent, head over to summit.org slash resources to find out about the programs, the articles, the videos, the eBooks, and more that we offer. Also, if you're looking for more great podcasts that will build your faith and inspire you, our friends at Edify have what you need. You can find more podcasts, including the Dr. Jeff Show podcast, on the Edify app. Download it at edify.app, spell E-D-I-F-I. And then you can also search for it in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store.